Hi, I'm Dan Ferrara. I'm the Director of Marketing Development for Tipping Point Theater, and I'm joined today by Laura Mancini, who's the Director of the Northville District Library. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, Dan. No problem, no problem. So we're so glad to have you here, and it's perfect timing because the announcement just came out that uh, libraries are gonna be allowed to, to open again, which is fantastic news. We are so thrilled about that. Um, we never expected to be as closed as long as we were, and we've been dying to get back in the building and get things started again, and we're really excited to be able to do that. So for folks who wanna go back to the library, on site in the building watch our facebook and our social media for announcements as to when certain things will be available but we're really looking forward to seeing all of our friends again that's perfect and do you have a date right now that you're looking at i mean i know i have a stack of books ready to be returned and and i know my kids and i are eager to to get some new books do you have a day that you think things are going to start rolling we're targeting the week of june 15th as a time to introduce curbside service to our residents. So if you, there are materials that you want to reserve and get from the library and start checking things out again, you'll be able to do that. And we will also start to be accepting returns that week. And then we'll be back to providing telephone assistance. During the shutdown, we were, we were limited to providing email assistance. So the week of June 15th, we're gonna to start to roll things out again. We're going to have a phased in opening of the library because of health conditions, COVID is still out there. Folks are still getting it. So we need to be careful with our patrons, our customers. We need to be careful with our staff. And we also need to prep the inside of the library a bit to make it so that folks can come back in in a safe manner. So we're starting off first with curbside service, returns, and telephone service. And all of our virtual services that we've been offering all along will continue. Okay, so that's great. I was just going to ask you about that. So when people go to the library website, they go to northvillelibrary.org. Um, if you have that website and, and the library card, you can access quite a bit of information. We have an ebook collection that has over 26,000 titles in it. We have movies to download. We have audio books. We have music to listen to. We have over 70 research databases. So if you're a parent working with your school children and need to get them information that is accurate and credible and not just what might be the first hit on the internet, you can go in and access all of that. And we've started to offer online library cards because of the shutdown, and that's going to continue as well. We understand folks can't necessarily get to the library to get a physical card. So we've streamlined that process to make it available electronically. So you can get one right from the convenience of your own home. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now you have, one, one of the things I'm excited about at Tipping Point, we um, just worked with, with the library staff and we've come up with a, a program that we're gonna work with uh, you on, which is we're gonna do a live uh, table read of a script. Um, we're gonna get some actors, uh, through Zoom, and we're going to have a script. And on July 30th, we're going to do a live table read um, with the library, and we're going to broadcast that right from your Zoom account. And and that's just one of many um, online programs you have here. And I see a bunch of them on your website as I look here. But but those have continued straight through all of this, right? And you said they're going to continue to to go as well. Yes, I mean once the shutdown hit, and we realized it was going to be a while. You know, the staff and I really discussed and grappled with how are we going to continue to serve our patrons? We have to continue to serve our patrons. We can't let this virus just shut everything down. And we know Northville is a city that's very connected technology wise. It's connected in general, but especially with the technology. So we started to roll out online programs, um, specifically with the teens audience, and that went very well. And then now we've added more on. So we're gonna do our summer reading program that's gonna be all online this year. We're gonna do adult programs like the Tipping Point. Um, our book club discussions have been moved online. So pretty much the whole summer, we have all of the programming that you would expect to see at the North of the Library, but now instead of coming in, you'll be able to enjoy it right from the comfort of your own home. That's wonderful. That's great that you've been able to continue that. I know a lot of different organizations have been trying to do that. They're, they're saying, how can we innovate, adapt, change the way we do things to make sure we can still get our information, still get our programming out 
still serve the people that, uh, that, that we're here to serve. Um, in fact, Tipping Point, we're going through that right now. We're working on other ways in addition to the partnership with the library um, to try to present some of our, our programs remotely and online. So hopefully there's more information about that to come from, from us. We're waiting on some, some approvals from, from um, getting the rights to certain shows. Sure. Um, but, but it's exciting. It's exciting. And I've seen, you know, retailers in town have adapted the way that they're doing business. Restaurants have adapted the way they're doing business. And I think um, the businesses that are fortunate enough to come out of this um, stronger, right, are going to have so many more resources at hand because they had to adapt and they had to, to figure out new ways to do these things. And I think for art and culture organizations for so long, our whole program was the brick and mortar institution. And really, it's the content that we provide. A building is a building. Right. Okay, and so what do you do when the building is no longer accessible? All that content is still there. So you have to think about how can I get it to my audience, to all the things that they still enjoy. And with technology, we're able to do a lot of that and still have them experience the library or experience theater, but now just in a whole new different way. That's so cool. So we're moving beyond that building, the brick and mortar concept. And I think it's great. It's forced people to do that too, right? Every time I was in the library, I'm checking out books and I see the little postcards and bookmarks on the counter there that say, oh, you can do this online and you can do that online. And I'm, I'm a tech savvy enough person, but I always thought, no, no, I'll just go in the library. I'll get it. Um, but knowing that those resources were there because I had seen that so many times, it was great to be able to, you know, to continue to get new content through, through all of this, um, you know, just because I have a library card. And, uh, right, and we found that usage of our electronic materials has doubled in the last three months. Not that people weren't using them before, they were, but it was kind of like what you just described. You know, we tell people they have this, but you know, they never really necessarily had time to like sit down and really see the scope of our offerings. Now, now they have, and they're really liking what they're seeing. And we're, we're loving that fact that all of these resources we've been investing in are, are making it into the hands of our Northville community. Right. And you always have those people, right, that say, no, I need a book in my hands, right? I need that, 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 that feeling of it. And, and I'm the same way. I love that. But it's nice to know that if I need something, you know, the resources are there. The library is more than just a building. Like you said, it's more than just a book in your hand. It's, you know, it's a lot of resources and, and you can get them basically any time of day, any day of the week now. Exactly. So that's great. And going back to library card, um, another thing that we're doing with, with the library, which we're excited at Tipping Point, um, we're going to start to offer a discount on our tickets to library card holders, which we're very excited about. Um, and I know there's other, other groups and organizations and, and places that you can use your library card and get a discount, um, you know, throughout the Metro Detroit area. Yeah, we belong to the Museum Adventure Pass program, which offers cardholders discounts to 60 different arts and cultural and park organizations throughout the state of Michigan. So that's available to any of our residents. And we're thrilled now to be able to add the tipping point to that list of offerings. Yeah, no, that's I exciting for us. And we've been talking too with, with some of the staff at the library about every time we do a show, we'd love to give some information about that show to the staff and the librarians so they can maybe find some other books or some other uh, materials that provide context. You yes. Know, that's a huge thing, right? When, especially in theater, it's great to see the show. It's great to get the entertainment. But a lot of times you leave, you leave a, a, a performance, frankly, you leave a movie, you leave, you know, whatever, and you want to know more and it'll be nice to have that resource, you know, right there at the library uh, that, that can tell you more about what we were talking about. And that's a great way for us to be able to supplement to enhance what you're doing. Yeah, no, so we're, we're grateful for that. Obviously, you know, the library is a great resource. Um, and in fact, I noticed on Facebook, I think it was just yesterday, um, you know, June is, is Pride Month uh, and, and you're supporting the LGBTQ community. Um, you had a post up there talking about some some books that are available, you know, for people that want to be an ally, for people that want to learn more and 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 be better about um, learning about people who have been marginalized. 
Libraries are for everyone. They are a public resource. So we want to serve the public in all of its forms. We want everyone in Northville to feel that they are welcome and that they are part of our library. And one of the things that you mentioned the post yesterday is just one way of us trying to show that, you know, spotlight some of the different resources in our collection that you wouldn't necessarily think we would have. Right. And that's, and that's something else we've looked at, you know, we've been talking, you know, especially in the last few days about, about being allies to, to the black community, uh, to the, to the issues of racism that are, that are, are everywhere today, right, that, that everybody is talking about, and, and I'm glad they're doing that. Um, you know, the library has a ton of resources for that. There's no shortage. I mean, you can go on Google and look up, how can I be an ally? What can I read to learn more and understand more about um, what these marginalized people have been dealing with, what, what the systemic racism is, and, and why, um, even, though I, even though I think I'm helping, I might not be helping, right? How can I be better about, about being an ally to, to people of color um, and, and all that they're going through and have been going through for, for years? Um, and I'm sure the library has a ton of those resources, and for anything that may not even be in, in this, necessarily in, in, in your location, you're also able to pull books from, from other libraries locally as well. Locally and nationally. Right. So that is, that is an opportunity for us to partner and to be able to get more resources in the hands of our community. And you know, certainly for the community, minority communities and other communities, there's a lot of fantastic books and uh, written pieces and even oral pieces that they have done where they talk about their experiences and all of that you can find at the library. And what's so important right now in this age of fake news, it's so hard for people who want to learn more to know how do I find accurate information because we're just bombarded with stuff. And that's where the library can really help you. We're going to connect you to resources that are the right resources. And I don't mean that in a political sense, I mean that in an accuracy sense, mm -hmm. that are authentic, that are credible, that have been verified. So when you do wanna learn something more or experience something new, that you're getting the right information in your hands. You're getting an accurate understanding of what's going on. That's wonderful. And I know um, for a while now, probably for the past year or two, I've seen you have resources at the library just that talk about how to figure out if what you're reading is fake news, right? Yes. It talks about how yes. do you verify, you know, what are some of those, those cues and those clues that the thing you're reading, the thing you found online or that someone forwarded you or that some, you know, may be biased or may, may, have, may have an agenda behind it that's, that's not necessarily authentic. And I think that's great. You know, the library's been able to provide that. Everything has a point of view attached to it. So it's helpful to understand what that point of view is so you can contextualize the information that you're getting and understanding where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm not trying to make myself a Luddite. I want to go on the record saying I use the internet every single day. I'm using it right now. I could have done my job the last three months without it. But when people say, well, I read on the internet, I kind of cringe. I'm like, oh, but it's great that you're on the internet. It's great that you're reading. But what did you read on the internet? Where did it come from? Exactly. Are you getting the right information? And in the time of COVID, that is so, so, so important. A hundred percent. Absolutely. I agree. And, and I think it's nice, you know, you have so many programs for kids. You mentioned the summer reading program that's coming up. I know my kids love participating in that. Um, you've got story time and other things that, that you do. Um, not to mention just the great, the great kids section in, in the library. Um, you know, are those programs going to continue? You know, is that, is that the thought that there's some of that's online, obviously, that you said, and then, you know, as the doors open, hopefully you'll be able to, to bring some of that back uh, in, in person when it's safe to do so, I would say. Summer reading is going to continue online. We are also going to be offering throughout the summer virtual story times. Okay. So those will continue. And, you know, we're tentatively targeting the fall to be able to bring people back in the building for programming. We'll have you back in the building earlier, you know, provided health conditions um, allow for it to do things in the library. But in terms of groups of people, we're tentatively targeting the fall. But in the meantime, we still want to give you all the things that you're used to experiencing and using at the library. So we're, we're trying it in a new way this year. 
Perfect. Well, I love it. And I think it's great. You know, I love the library. My family loves the library. It's a great resource for our community. I just want to hear now you're in charge of the library and I want to hear it from you. I'm not going to have late fees on these books that have been. No sitting. fees, okay. no fees, no fines, none of it. What if, what if they were like late before you shut down? Do I have to pay the late fee from, from the. No. Okay. Just checking. My, all right. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, Laura, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, everyone's going to be excited that library's reopening. We appreciate all that you've done during the, the shutdown and the stay home order. Um, and, and it's great to have you and the library as part of the community. Well, thank you. It's a real pleasure to work with you, Dan. I really look forward to the program in July, and I look forward to coming in the fall, hopefully, and seeing plays in person. Good. Yeah, we, we've got to, as soon as we know it's safe, you know, we, we're going to come out of this very strong. We just need to know when it's safe to have people right. back in the building. We want, to be, we want to be careful just like everybody else. So we've got a plan, and uh, we can't wait to put it into, into play. So thank you again, Laura. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. All right.